What do you think, Mark? I feel like a bit of an idiot, actually. Why? Um, I don't know. Because it's sort of... I'm wearing radiation clothing. <laughs> it shouldn't be necessary. It must be absolutely awful to have your town wiped out by a tsunami and earthquake and then you can't even come back and rebuild because the whole place is contaminated by radiation. Even if it's not massively contaminated, it's contaminated enough that it scares the shit out of you and I think that's, you know, nobody can look you in the eye and say you shouldn't be worried. Um, and, that, you know, and there's no other energy source that does this, that leaves huge areas contaminated um, by this this strange invisible presence which you know is potentially deadly, you know. Every, everything has its drawbacks, everything has its risks, but this is something which is unique to, to nuclear. I guess I can understand why people are scared of nuclear power more. <laughs> you know, it's um, it's kind of eerie. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I would say I'm having a wobble. I can see why we'd want to do without nuclear power. I really can. Um, this parking lot is the the hottest spot in the, in the whole exclusion zone. This place got some serious fallout, I think. So you still pro-nuclear? Um, am, <laughs> am I still pro-nuclear? Ask, ask me in a few days when I've had a chance to get my head around it, right? Are you still pro-nuclear? To start the chain reaction, all we need is one neutron. I think you can see what is going to happen. Watch. My first introduction to nuclear power was quite nice. It was uh, a Disney movie called Our Friend the Atom. The atom was going to bring about a, a wonderful revolution in, in the way we got our energy. And there was a nuclear-powered submarine, the Nautilus, that went under the North Pole, and us kids were really enthusiastic about that. And then, when I was in my early teens, Admiral Rickover came to give a speech. And my dad knew I was interested in science, so he uh, took me. Watch the control rods come out. As the control rods come out, the reactor starts, the water starts in circulating through here. He was a wonderful speaker, and he was very inspiring about American technology and about the future. And he talked about nuclear energy being used to light up cities, not just run submarines. So it was a generally positive notion. I got into the nuclear business in early 1948. Prior to that, I was working on engines for the Tucker automobile. Everything we had done up until that time to produce energy was by burning something. The enticement in, in the nuclear business was the fact that it was a new source of energy, a new way to generate heat. But the equivalency is huge. One pound of uranium, which is the size of my fingertip, if you could release all of the energy, it has the equivalent of about 5,000 barrels of oil. And that to me is amazing. In the 1980s, my husband and I were living in the east end of Long Island. And um, word gets out that this nuclear plant is going to start up. And this is, of course, right after Three Mile Island. That's very much in people's minds. The local pro-environmental people, and I would be one of those, uh, 
just said, yeah, we got to stop Shoreham, however we can. Every day the plant operates, radiation will be coming out of the plant, right? And it'll get into the food. Women may be hardwired to protect our families. And it's just a natural impulse. If something looks like it's bad, we're holding our hand and saying, no, no, please, please, we, we can't have that. I remember these big scare ads in the papers, getting people to organize rallies against Shoreham. There were many things I didn't know at that time that I've learned since. For one thing, it turns out the ads were placed by the oil delivery industry. You know, the companies that deliver fuel to people in Long Island. And sure, the oil companies can say, go solar, because they know it's never going to replace oil heat. You cannot turn on the sun in the winter and hope to warm up your house. Good luck. Sol solar, solar, not, not nuclear. nuclear. Yeah. Sponsored by the Will Heat Institute. Yeah, no problem. Know. Yeah. You don't need a furnace, just have solar panels. They not, I mean, this is the cynicism of the fossil fuel industry. The difference now is in the scale of the damage we are doing. We are seeing a vast increase in the amount of carbon dioxide reaching the atmosphere. It is mankind and his activities which are changing the environment of our planet in damaging and dangerous ways. Change to the sea around us, change to the atmosphere above, leading in turn to change in the world's climate, which could alter the way we live in the most fundamental way of all. That prospect is a new factor in human affairs. It's comparable in its implications to the discovery of how to split the atom. Indeed, its results could be even more far-reaching. We can't just do nothing. One of the key arguments that, that climate deniers use is, oh, look, you know, the climate's a huge thing. You, you really say we're affecting the weather, just us, you know, we're just little people. Um, but we are. We're beginning to see the kind of destabilization and chaos that you get actually when you see this transition to much warmer global temperatures. And that process of change, of very, very rapid climate change, is going to wreak havoc on human society. Part of the problem is intermittency, and that hasn't been solved. It's not always sunny and it's not always windy, and there are long periods of time when renewables would deliver no power at all into a grid. So they have to have natural gas back up. So what you end up getting with renewables is a pretty big expansion of natural gas. You know, I'm sure people had told me that, and I didn't believe them. We're building these all over the country, and one of the questions we ask, we need about 3,000 foot in altitude, we need flat land, we need 300 days of sunlight, and we need to be near a gas pipe. Because, you know, for all of these big utility scale power plants, whether it's wind or solar, everybody is looking at gas as the supplementary fuel. The, the, the plants that we're building, the wind plants and the solar plants, are gas plants. I end up feeling like a sucker. I, I ended up feeling like I was a sucker. 
The idea that we're gonna replace oil and coal and natural gas with solar and wind and nothing else is a hallucinatory delusion.